there, Dr. Andrew Grecki, physical therapist, owner of Superior Physical Therapy, and today I want to answer a question that I get asked almost every single day, and, and I want to share the answer that I have with you. The question is, should I get an MRI if I have back pain? Uh, it, it, almost everybody that experiences back pain has a burning desire to, to want to find out what's causing their back pain. And so it's beautiful that we can take uh, somebody and put them in a tube and get an image of what's going on inside their body. And so to me, this tells us what the structure of the body inside is looking like. Um, and so before I tell you the answer to it, I want to share with you a study that I have here. Um, this study is called, um, it was actually published in April of 2015 uh, by the American Journal of Neuroradiology. Uh, very well respected uh, journal, uh, peer reviewed, and actually this study is, is what's called a systematic review, which is the strongest level of scientific evidence. It's where they take uh, hundreds or thousands of studies that have been done on the same topic, and somebody reviews all those studies to, to summarize the conclusions and get an average uh, of the data, essentially. So this is called the Systematic Literature Review of Imaging Features of Spinal Degeneration in Asymptomatic Populations. So what that means is that they looked at uh, tons of studies that are done with people that were given an MRI, uh, but they have no back pain. So, so they just they looked at people without pain and, and MRIs, and they wanted to find out what does the MRI show uh, that the spine is dealing with or that has from a structural standpoint. And I think that the study is fascinating because what it really reveals is that, that the spine ages over time, um, just like every other part of our body. If I look at a 60-year-old skin versus a 25-year-old skin, there is a very visual difference, right? We have wrinkles, we have some uh, sunspots, and the skin becomes more uh, brittle. There's a visual difference between skin at 60 and skin at 25. I think we'd all agree on that. So this study looks at the spine on people without pain, and on the right side of my screen here, this is the, the summary of that systematic review. So a really high level of scientific evidence that basically shows, and they looked at a, a bunch of categories here of what they were finding in the MRI. So you can see that number one was disc degeneration. Um, that's also called uh, disc space narrowing or degenerative disc disease or arthritis. And it's interesting, that top topic here, you can see then, uh, here's our, what they looked for, and then here's the age group, and then in the chart here, or the table, it shows the percentage of what they found, again, in people without pain. So let's look, for example, at 20 years old. They found that 37% of people that were imaged on an MRI have signs of disc degeneration, or arthritis, or degenerative disc disease. Those are all the same thing. Now, if we go all the way to the age of 60, you can see here that now, 88% of people that were given an MRI at the age of 60 without pain have the disc degeneration going on in their spine. That's fascinating to me. That's absolutely more than I would have ever imagined. Um, and of course, as we move up to 80 years old, that number is 96%. So, so basically, everybody in their 80s, 96% has disc degeneration in their spine, whether they have pain or not. Now let's move down to uh, another really common condition that I hear people that are diagnosed when they have back pain. And that's the fourth one down here, which is a disc bulge. Actually, disc bulge and then a disc protrusion is the next category. Uh, that A disc bulge, if it progresses and gets worse, becomes a protrusion. Um, again, at 20 years old, people without pain, 30% of them have a disc bulge. Um, without pain. Let's move all the way to 60. Now we look at 69% of people that were MRI have a disc bulge without any pain in, in their body. Again, really fascinating to me. Um, another one that we look at is what's called facet degeneration, or that also can be termed arthritis in the joints of the spine. Again, if we move up to 60 year olds, 50% of people given an MRI have uh, signs in their spine that there is uh, arthritis in the joints. Again, without pain. So to me, what is that? that? That helps us answer the question, should I get an MRI for my back pain? And, and maybe before we go there, an analogy might be, um, let me set this down. An analogy might be, uh, think of if I hit my thumb with a hammer, okay? Um, 
immediately I have pain. Um, and then a few days later, that nail typically will get discolored and it'll get black and blue. And it continues to hurt for a while. Um, so there was some structural damage to my nail when I hit it with a hammer. We would all agree with that. Now, if I fast forward and I say, okay, two months from now, somebody walks up to me and goes, oh my gosh, what did you do to your thumb? That looks like it hurts really bad. And I tell them the story, I hit it with a hammer and it hurt pretty bad for a couple days, but it's been two months and it doesn't hurt anymore. But it looks nasty. It looks like it hurts, but it doesn't hurt. That's kind of what an MRI is now telling us that we are finding evidence of damage that happened in the past. And with people that are living without pain, but they have the damage, that is proof that the body is designed to adapt, to compensate, to learn that structural damage over time, the body accepts that damage, um, especially if other parts of the body are moving properly. And that's the key. So, so we know that the lower back can have all these problems, but if the areas below the hips and the areas above the upper spine, if those aren't moving properly, it's gonna cause a lot of stress into the lower back. So, so the key there is I think we need to recognize what an MRI is really for. So an MRI is, is for, I call it a pre-surgical tool. So if I'm gonna go under the knife for whatever reason, and I know I'm gonna be doing that, there's no choice, I would like my surgeon to get a picture of what's going on first before he goes in there. I, I don't believe, and, and, and there's more evidence that's supporting this now, that MRI should be the only reason that somebody uh, does a, a surgery. So for example, if you're 60 years old and you, you have disc degeneration or arthritis in your spine, uh, and you're being told you need a lumbar fusion or a surgery for your back, I would, I would disagree with that. I would say that the, the MRI is only one piece of the puzzle that looks at the structure. We also need to look at the function of the body. How is the body functioning? How are the hips moving? How is the upper spine moving? How are those things moving? And if they're not moving well, let's try to improve those things to move so it takes away the stress. And then let's see if that person can accomplish their goal, which is to move without pain before we jump the gun and get surgery on the spine based on an MRI. Now, I talk a lot about lower back pain, but the reality is on the other side here, we've got a lot of different parts of the body that this same study was done, the asymptomatic imaging study. And it's fascinating that we're finding, for example, in the neck, we had the same study. Um, there was 1,200 people without pain looked at on an MRI. And what they found was in your 20s, 75% of people that were imaged have a disc bulge in their neck without pain. They also found that 87.6% of all the people they looked at in the study, not just by one age, but 20 years old is pretty young, 87.6% had a disc bulge. So that, that's a pretty high percentage. That means that if I took 1,200 people off the street right now without pain, 87% chance they're gonna have a disc bulge in their neck, even though they have no pain. So we cannot use that piece of evidence for decision making. Another one is looking at the shoulder. The shoulder, they did the same thing. What they found was between the ages of 45 and 60, 72% of people have what's called a slap tear or a slap lesion, uh, which is a, uh, a lesion of the cartilage ring in the socket of the shoulder uh, without pain. Uh, moving on to the hip. 69% of people that were ages 15 to 66, 69% of people have a labral tear in their hip. Same concept as the shoulder, it's that cartilage ring around the socket of the hip. Um, looking at the knees, um, 40, let's see, between the ages of 20 and 68, 43% or 43, I'm sorry, 43 of 44 people in this study, so 99% of people in the study had at least one uh, meniscus abnormality, meaning they had a meniscus tear in their knee, which is again, cartilage ring in there that oftentimes leads to surgery um, without pain. So again, it's not just the spine. Um, here's another one for the spine, by the way. Uh, 3,000 people looked at without pain. Uh, at 50 years old, 80% people, of people had a disc, disc degeneration or arthritis in their spine without pain. So the question originally was, should I get an MRI for my back pain? And I would say that if you plan on having surgery soon, yes. Um, but if you want to try to do things that are conservative and that have a really good chance of helping you relieve your back pain without surgery, I would say right now it's actually going to help make things worse. 
The MRI makes people assume that just because you have that structural change in your spine, that's why you're having pain. That's the cause of pain. I would argue that that's not the cause of pain. That's the structural changes, just like wrinkles on the skin. Um, that does not mean that's why you're having the pain. That means your spine is changing. The reason you're having pain is because there's a movement problem. There's a movement problem somewhere else in your body that's causing stress on your spine. So hopefully I'm helping somebody out there um, who has a burning desire to get an MRI. Again, not to mention they're expensive. So an MRI ranges from $2,000 to $2,500, depending on where you go. By the way, you can get an MRI. I believe somebody that I just met went all the way down to Grand Rapids, which is about a two and a half hour drive, and they got one for about $750 at a, at a clinic. Um, it's amazing how the ranges are different, but again, very expensive. Um, and really, I would say it leads more people down the path to surgery than we really should be doing. Um, we should be trying to do conservative things. Um, and we should be letting the body heal itself naturally. So I want to just address that question and hopefully that helps somebody out there. If you know somebody who is uh, planning on getting an MRI, wants an MRI, has back pain, um, I think you really need to look at what the research and the evidence shows um, in order to you know, make the proper decision um, and, and, and live a healthy life and not get an unneeded surgery. You know, by the way, I also uh, fell for that. Uh, I wrote a book about this, by the way. You can pick it up. Uh, it's free. It's on our website. Uh, you can stop into our clinic and grab a free copy. But I, in 2004, I had a, a, about a year and a half of back pain and went through all types of uh, treatments. And, and about three months in, I, I was given an MRI and it was told that it was because I had a disc bulge. And, and again, I went down the path of everybody thought it was a disc bulge. So they were treating my back. My back needs to be stronger. My back needs to be more stretchy. And, and I had surgery on my back. And guess what? I, I didn't get relief from the surgery. So $100,000 of care treatment later, I had to pay 30% of that, by the way. What was discovered was that my right hip did not have rotation. And it took only two weeks for a physical therapist, a professor of mine, to improve the rotation of my hip. And then magically my back pain was gone. And so I'm a living proof that an MRI makes things worse because everybody was convinced that that disc bulge was the reason I was having pain. And in reality, it was my hip. And I see this, we all see this in the clinic a lot. We see it happen a lot. And so I would encourage you to pump the brakes on the MRI. It's a pre-surgical tool. It should be done right before surgery, not two years before surgery, not just for fun, not just to see what's going on in there. That, that seeing what's going on is misleading. It clouds not only your mind as the back pain sufferer, but it also clouds the provider, the health provider's mind because they assume that's what's the problem. And so we need to think outside the box, use evidence. We've got a systematic review that is the strongest level of evidence that we have in, in the scientific uh, research world. And so hopefully you enjoyed my answer, which is pump the brakes on the MRI.